What's going on, guys? I am here with Chris of New Venture Entrepreneurs. Uh, we are going to do our second weekly recap of our Merch by Amazon business. But Chris, I thought I'd start with just um, asking you a few questions like you did for me last week, just to give my audience an idea of how you got introduced to Merch by Amazon and just kind of your background with e-commerce and everything else. So um, with that being said, let's just get started. Like, How did you kind of get into e-commerce? What was the first, you know, your first experience or your first platform? Um, and how's that kind of led you down this road to where we are now with merch? Yeah, um, well, Ben, thank you for having me on your channel. Um, so I got started on merch through um, pretty much a couple of months ago. I applied back in July. I, don't, I think it was about July or June of last year. And I just played the whole entire waiting game of uh, just waiting and waiting and waiting, hoping to hear something back. And I didn't get approved until January of this year. Ooh, so. Uh, yeah. But before that, I, I've been selling on eBay. Uh, I started selling on eBay in, in uh, December of 2016. And um, just from that, I've been jumping around from eBay. I did Shopify for a second. I did um, Amazon FBA, private label, um, Etsy for a while. Uh, just just doing, doing so many different things. And you know, once you start something, you kind of jump to something else and it just leads you to another opportunity. So. From that, I just I just found you know merch by Amazon, and it looks like a great opportunity. So, this is what, what my main focus is as of right now. Yeah. So, okay, that you have a very like similar background to me, just with all the different platforms and everything else. Uh, now, I, I you have talked about it before, but you're still on eBay, right? And then um, yeah. are you still on like Etsy or any of the other platforms, maybe with your merch stuff or with anything else? Yeah. I mean, over time, I've kind of uh, winded down from some of my platforms, especially private label. Um, there are some things like once you get into something, you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't really. Totally. And, um, private label, it is a great opportunity, but at this moment is just, is not the right move for me. It's pretty expensive. And something like Merch by Amazon is a lower barrier to entry. You know, there's not any startup costs really. And, um, it's just, it's, it's just a better point for me to just start doing that business. And so I grow more capital to get into private label, you know, more effectively. Um, so I kind of wind, I kind of um, stopped doing private label. Um, Amazon FBA, kind of the same thing. I don't really go out as much to look for stuff to sell to Amazon warehouse or send to Amazon warehouses. Mm -hmm. um, but I still do eBay and I still do Etsy, and I completely stopped Shopify a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, pretty much is uh, just eBay and Etsy, and then Merch by Amazon is pretty much my main focus as of right now. Good stuff. Now, is yeah. that your goal though, to use like kind of the money you make from merch and actually go back to private labeling or back to um, Amazon's like seller central platform? Well, I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just want to grow enough capital to uh, so, to the point where I can just build a foundation and merch where it's just running on its own and then just taking my entrepreneur, you know, spirit and jumping into something else, you know, getting private label to the point where it's just growing on its own and then jump to something else. You know, that, that's just the way I see how I want to grow my business, you know, just have everything go on its own really. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, th I think it's a good, that's pretty much like my mentality with all of it too, is like get one thing up and running and have it where it's like making you, you know, at least maybe a thousand dollars a month and then take all that money and funnel it back into either the same business into merch or do it into like kind of a complimentary business, something that's not too far away from the space you're in, but that, you know, is going to be a, your next like kind of cash flow stream. And I think that's the other cool thing is with merch, you're also learning still about e commerce and you can take kind of maybe the assets that you have on the merch platform and use them, you know, put them on eBay, Pinterest, or not Pinterest, Etsy, like any of the other stuff too. So right. yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, the best advice is just to jump into something because you'll start learning more about e commerce in general. Um, like I started on eBay. And from there, I was learning more about keywords and, you know, finding out what people are searching for. So you'll know what to put in your title or in your description. And then once I started doing Etsy, I kind of had a knowledge of, you know, SEO or just um, just keywords in general. So right. the best advice is just to jump into something, learn as much as you can. And if it doesn't work, you'll have some knowledge about online business and you can just go to something else that might be better suit for you. You know? Yeah, totally. I think, you know, it's as an entrepreneur, you only really have to be right like once or twice and, <laughs> you know, to, to get yeah. that one thing that could take off. You know, maybe it's a private label product or maybe it's like one that one merch shirt that takes off and helps you get, you know, a, a good solid BSR or whatever it may be. Like that's all you need is that one 
one or two things and hopefully those lead into other things. So I think, yeah, it yeah. sounds like it's the way to go. I'm pretty sure it's, it's very common to, in order to get some type of success, you got to go through many failures, you know, so <laughs> that's yeah. just, just the way it is really. Totally. So, um, yeah, let's get into it with, uh, it's good to know like part of your background, but let's get into it kind of with the merch um, numbers. So I just let you start off with, you know, what tier you're at, how many designs live, um, and then we can go from there, weekly sales, um, all that good stuff. So, Oh, I didn't even jot that down. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so good. I am currently still on tier uh, 500. You know, I said that last week. Um, at the moment, I it's been a long week for me, to be honest. Uh, I haven't had a, a chance to really upload to merch. I've been so busy with other things. Um, I only have 108 live listings at the moment. Uh, some listings were actually taken down because, you know, the whole 90 day rule where if right. nothing sells with 90 days, they're going to take it down. So I had a few shirts taken down. I did relist them. Um, and I actually had my first return this week. Oh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was a little little bit of a shocker. But I mean, I've had so many sales. Actually, I've had uh, 57 sales up to this point. Nice. And, all time sales. Yeah, all time sales. And I literally just sold one one before right before we got into this call. Yep. Always uh, a good feeling. Yeah, so uh, I have fifty seven sales and for the royalties part, I have a hundred and twenty dollars and nine cents, which is not too bad at this point. Um so like two, I have, roughly two dollars, two dollars per sale, something like that. Exactly. Um and I have three cancels. Uh, with just one return. And so just to talk about some of the things that worked for me. Well, I think I lost myself. One second. I see you on. Yeah, it's good on my end. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was uh, sc scrolling through uh, Windows. But anyway, some things that worked for me, I would have to say is just something I'm realizing about merch is just my opinion is to, of course, get more designs up, of course. But it's really good to attack those kind of like low competition like kind of high demand or mid to high demand niches where just for example, the niche that I'm in that sells very well for me. Um, there's only about seven or 800 live listings, you know, or live designs for that niche, Yeah. but it's very well known. Um, something I like to look at are like the first, I don't know, five or six, maybe 10 designs and see what BSR rank those are in. Mm -hmm. And if it's about a million or less, and obviously it's a good, you know, niche to get into. So, um, like I said, if it's like the niche that I'm in, like I said, is around seven or 800 live listings and the first like 10 are around a million. So there is demand for it. So it really the best strategy is to attack those type of niches. So I'm already in one. I'm already, I've already started researching on other niches to get into with the same category or same criteria. I mean, um, you know, like the first couple of listings around a million or less, and it doesn't have that many, like 50,000 live listings, you know, it's really attack those. Yeah low competition ones and then so, you take a deep dive on like one niche at a time and then kind of spread out from there exactly yeah so um that's what i plan on doing i'm already starting to think of things like stuff that i'm really interested in you know like um just anything that you know yourself that you're kind of interested in uh i like i for me personally i'm just gonna throw this out there i kind of like those like uh buddha statues you know stuff like that sure. and if you if you type in you know buddha or something like that or peace and love and or just you know uh, stuff like that into Merch Informer, which will show you all the live listings for that for that uh, keyword. You'll see like Buddha uh, statues, or just Buddha doesn't have that many listings, but the first you know kind of like ten listings are in a pretty decent uh, sales rank. So that's one thing I'm going to get into, um, and just stuff like that, like stuff that you're just really interested in. You know, you have some knowledge of. You know, really just start looking, doing research on those because. They may not have, because you, everyone's unique. You know, everyone has their own interests. So when you start typing your interest in doing re research in that, then um, they're probably not going to have uh, a lot of competition. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, uh, I, I, that's, I really like that. It's funny you, you bring that up. It makes me think of kind of going back to actually how I looked at private labeling, which there was a guy, I don't know if you followed him or listened to like any podcast, but Scott Volker. And he would talk about yeah. like, how do you find products, you know, that you want to, you know, get into for private labeling. And he had this whole thing that was like your touch list. So for two, two, three, four days, like make a list of all the things that you like touch, like from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, wow. you're, mm -hmm. you know, what 
literally from picking up your iPhone and, you know, and you make a list of every single thing. Um, and you're not going to necessarily find like all the things that you want to maybe get into private labeling or maybe you search some of them, but it gives you like a good place to kind of like start, start like the, the wheels working in your head of like, Oh, well maybe this could be a cool design or maybe that leads you down to like the next design or the next thing. So I I like that idea a lot of just like, Mm -hmm. what are your personal interests? What are the things that you're personally using or seeing like on a day-to-day basis? I think that's like an amazing place to start for finding designs. Right, because everyone's going to be designing Father's Day shirts or Mother's Day shirts or, you know, St. Patrick's Day shirts. So with that said, there's going to be a ton of competition. So it's really going to be a little bit more challenging for you to, you know, get into that niche. But if you think of things that you that you like yourself or your own interest, then you have a better chance of uh, ranking up. You know? Yeah, 100%. Uh, Some things that, I, that did not work for me, like I said already, I haven't really had a chance to list too many designs. So, um maybe I would have been able to sell more than what I have if I were to list more. Well, didn't you, um, uh, do you, so do you still have a, a designer that you're outsourcing to? Or are you doing all your designs yourself right now? Uh, yeah, that's actually the issue. I had to um, relieve my designer uh, not too long ago. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm kind of just designing on my own for the moment. Uh, just things didn't work out. I feel like he started getting a little bit, a uh, little lazy, I guess I could say. Um, and I just felt like it was just the best, the best thing to do for me is just, you know, take them off and find someone else really. Yeah. So I'm still on the hunt. I'm still searching for someone else to design for me. Uh, let me get into my sales. Uh, so for the past seven days, I'm looking on pretty much right now for the past seven days, I've sold 12 and oh, nice. that's solid. Yeah. Actually, to be honest, for the past eight days, I've been making extremely, or I've been making consistent sales every single day. Uh, my top day this week was on Monday. I've sold three shirts um on sunday i sold two and wednesday i sold two and then every other day i pretty much just sold one but everything's been very consistent i like where it's going right now um you know very hopeful for the future as i add more listings to uh to merch yeah man that's awesome i mean that yeah i feel like what, getting into that consistent place of like sales every single day is like that's an amazing feeling in, in and of itself right exactly good stuff yeah i think uh i yeah i had a pretty slow week to be honest i uh oh. I wish I was a little bit more consistent like you, but I think I'll just get into mine really quick. I'm still tier 500. I was at about 130 live designs last week. And this week, um, I have, at wise of today, I have 185 live. Um, this week, I only did three three sales though. So only three shirts versus last week, I think I was at six. So last week was pretty consistent. This one, not so much. Um, mm-hmm. So zero returns still. Um, knock on wood, which is great. But yeah, I think, uh, this week was definitely a slow week overall for me. Um, which, you know, can be a little demoralizing, but I, I just try to focus like kind of on the longer term and just think about like, Hey, am am I uploading consistently? Am I getting like higher quality designs doing better research? So, um, I just to touch on it, like, I think the things that didn't really work for me this week were, um, you know, I honestly don't even really know what it was that didn't work. I just think that it was maybe a slower week inconsistencies with some of the sales um, because overall, like been doing a lot of research, getting like my designs um, uploaded. And I definitely feel like I have high quality designs. So I think that I need to think more about like how I'm building maybe the listings themselves or doing what you were talking about and looking for those niches that are really going to be able to get me like consistent, you know, few sales per design per month and kind of building off that because I thought I had a really solid niche that I was in that was doing me, you know, a few units, a few units a month per design. Um, that one is slowed down. It's which I'm not exactly sure why. So yeah, I think those are kind of like the things. Now, one thing I was going to ask you about is like, I ha- I've pushed a lot more designs live in the last five days. Do you, um, how long do you think it like normally takes to see those like up live and then selling um, selling, like, do you think there's any time lag, but you know, for indexing on Google or on Amazon search engine, like I'm kind of curious about that. That's a good question. Honestly, I do not have the answer for that. Um, it, it really varies. Um, I have, I have no idea. I have heard some people say some things like, you know, once you have it up, like once you submit it and it's accepted, it may take a while to index onto the uh, Amazon's platform, but I don't know if that's 100% true. Um, I've had some sales yeah. where I listed it and it sold, you know, within the next day or like a couple hours or something like that. That's happened to me once. 
Um, so I, I'm not even sure what, what that could be. Um, so you're saying what's your strategy, what you're doing now is really just like focusing on one niche. That's what you're doing right now. Yeah. You're, so, not, really, you're think, not really expanding into other, other niches. When we talked last week, I had just, I'd, you know, just gotten my designer. And so I was going pretty broad at the time and just had like, you know, I mean, I was doing research, definitely doing some targeted research, but I wanted to do like a very broad, like kind of feel of like what he could do design wise. So I was, I had to maybe do like, you know, a lot of stuff in kind of the big niches and then those, the sub niches of those. Um, and now, and then like the last week I kind of focused more on just like a two or three niches that in the past I've done like pretty well in and had him create designs for those. Um, but I think like towards the very end of the week, I started started thinking a little bit more about kind of the strategy that you talked about, which goes like, again, like I think back to private labeling a lot um, for me. And that's like, you know, you choose what criteria you're looking for and then you don't really, you only have focus on like that, something that meets that criteria. So for you, it's, you know, finding something that has maybe what the top 10 designs have under a million BSR. And, um, you know, there's not too many, like, it's not a very saturated niche. You have, you know, less than a thousand or 2000, you know, competing shirts in there or something like that. And I think that's what I want to take from like you, your experience and like get, start doing that a little bit more. So, yeah. Yeah. One thing that I noticed with merch is that you can't really, you can't really have success if you just dip your toes very lightly into these different niches. Like if you you find something that's good and you probably have, you throw up maybe like, I don't know, three designs, you know, it's not really going to sell, from my experience at least, it's not going to have uh, so much success uh, as opposed to you kind of digging into a niche and just like maximizing like 10 or, or more designs or something like that. That's where I find more success because the niche that I'm in, I have more designs in that and I'm finding more sales with that one niche. Um, I I have dipped my toes in other niches before, like kind of like low niches, but I'm not really, I'm not really getting any sales really. And yeah. not only that, but the niche that I'm in, um, I have several designs up for it. I have quite a few. You know, I have a lot, I mean, um, but only three of those shirts out of all the shirts I have for that one niche are actually selling consistently. So it's not yeah. not only getting in one niche and having a ton of designs up, you have to, you know, consider the fact that maybe only a few of those designs are going to sell anyways, you know? Yeah, I think, and I think that's the other thing. It's like at the end of the day, you know, I've that's another thing that I've been learning a lot about. You know, I talked a few of the other people in kind of the merch space that we know we've talked about before. Like I know Greg, we were chatting with, and he's got he had a, an amazing week this last week. It looks like, and he was telling me it's only from like one or two or three of his designs are doing like massive amounts of sales. And I think that's like another kind of interesting to think about. It's totally like quality over quantity, but to find that one really quality design, like the market's really what determines like that design is quality and it's going to sell. So it's, I've been thinking kind of about that, like the overall strategy, like, Hey, I might make these designs I think are really high quality and like everything looks good, but if they're not getting in front of people or if the market doesn't determine that that's a good design, it doesn't matter anyway. So I think like that's, I'm definitely thinking a little bit more of that mentality and um, yeah, honestly, the, the one other thing I'll say is just like the, the whole BSR thing. I think a, a lot of the designs that I have, they're good. They're really good quality, but they're not getting in front of the eyeballs. And so they're not going to convert and get sales. And I think that's partially because, you know, they're in, if they're in like slightly, you know, more competitive niches, if, if you don't get those first few like organic sales, then your shirt's not going to get pushed up or even get any BSR in the first place. So, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, do you think advertising is something that eventually you're going to push at all? Or, I mean, obviously the goal is not to spend more money that you know on ads and everything else. But, uh, yeah, I do want to push more on advertising. I do have a Facebook uh, pa- a page for my brand, but I'm not really uh, listing as many posts as I should, of course. Yeah. Um, but I do think advertising has a does play a, a good role into getting more sales. Um, and just just today i was looking through some shirts i saw a very basic design that just said entrepreneur just in very basic font and it was 19.99 and the bsr was ranked pretty well i think it was like under a million but <clears throat> there was another design that was a uh, 14.99 and it said entrepreneur as well but it was ranked lower or you know like a higher rank than that so i was just like wait how how is this one priced a lot higher and is basic, but this other entrepreneur shirt is like priced lower and it looks basically the same, you know? So 
yeah. think advertising may or may not play a role into you know why people buy certain shirts totally it's i also just yeah it's crazy that you say like bring up just that simple text-based design because like some of the, a lot of the designs that have actually been selling well for me recently have literally been like either a clip art piece that i took off you know some website and put a little bit of text beneath or very 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 basic text designs that i either most of the text stuff i do myself or but there are a few my designer did and those are like over the last month i'd say those are the ones that are doing almost all of my sales or the the really really simple ones i don't know if it's because they're like resonating with someone or what it is but um yeah it's it in, could be advertising probably you know or advertising who knows like i don't yeah it's nuts but it's always uh, it's always a good thing to try different ways to see to get your product in front of more faces. So if, if advertising is what it takes, then it doesn't hurt to try. You know, totally. Um, I was going to ask you something. I remember from the our previous video together, you said that you sell your merch shirts on on eBay. So yeah, well, in the past, what I was doing is that I would um, before I got into merch specifically, I was doing. I had a Shopify store that was doing print on demand and I'd use custom cat, which was, it's like a, you know, a, a print print -a partner. It's like printful or printify any of those guys. And then I only use the Shopify store to actually like house all of my designs in, but, uh, and then I'd use an integration from there. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, you know what? Actually Shopify has their own integration. So I'd push all the t-shirts, um, that I had housed in there over live to eBay. And you know, that was doing, it's, it's not a lot, but I also, I haven't done that recently. Um, you know, at the time I had only maybe like 15 live and that would do, you know, I'd say one or two shirts a month. Um, okay. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Cause I'm just interested. I, I did a video with, um, you know, Shannon Spencer that you saw yeah. and, uh, Shannon did the same thing where he has, he just has like his whole hub of, you know, uh, merch shirts and he just blasts out to, you know, Shopify, merch by Amazon, eBay and all that. And I was just curious, like when I look on eBay, because I've been selling on eBay for a while, there's a lot of uh, like print on demand shirts on there, but they're priced at like around 10 or $12. So I was just curious, like how are you guys getting any success by selling on eBay when the competition is extremely high and people are just, you know, going like pricing their shirts so low, you know? Yeah. You say you're only getting like one or two a month, really? Yeah, but I, yeah, like one or two, to, at the time I was doing like one or two designs a month. Um, but I, you know, it's, I think at the end of the day, like it really is just about like the, the design that you're putting up has to be placed in the right place, obviously, right with the keywords and everything. But then it's just about like, what does it resonate with like the person on the other end? And that's something I picked up from like when I was doing door to door sales is that it doesn't like at the end of the day, price doesn't really matter. It's really more about like, do you love the product? It, like, have you got this person hooked on the product? Is it something that they want? And I mean that, you know, when you're doing door-to-door -door sales, you it's much more about the sales process. But I still take like the the lesson from that over to like online is that price does matter more online because people have all the different options. But if you're getting if you're not in a competitive space, like you have a very specific design and you're getting it in front of the people who are like very passionate about that design or that niche or whatever it is, or maybe it's just like a text-based phrase, it doesn't matter if it's twelve ninety nine versus nineteen ninety nine. Now. Like, I'm just saying that off the cuff. I don't know, like, if that's necessarily always true, but I think that's like the way to on eBay that you can still win is if you're, you have a shirt that really resonates with someone, like, and there's not much competition. So they can't really shop it around. They, they're much more likely to go and buy it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but kind of, and kind of going off what you were saying with door to door salesman and kind of going off what I was saying earlier, how that entrepreneur shirt was priced higher and it was making more sales. Um, so you have to like think about the presentation. So as a salesman, if you're just live and bubbly, you know, you have that personality, you're probably gonna get someone to buy from you. You know, if you have your listing, just really just pop out and stand out and like have color colors and I don't know, just make it really stand out. Yeah. You're probably gonna get someone to buy it because it just really, you know, is in their face and they're interested in that product. Um, I, like I said, eBay is extremely competitive. Yeah. Um, you're the eBay master, so you probably have like some more insight than I do, to be honest. I have a uh, the private label thing that I was doing. I also put it on eBay, um, and eBay just has a ton of like Chinese sellers, so they're of course going to price a lot lower. So when I put my listing on, and I was selling basically the same exact product as them, I was able to um, price it higher and still make sales because like I didn't have just that basic 
you know, this is a children's toy yeah. type of listing. I had like just colors on it and I had like big text, big font, you know, all this crazy stuff just popping out at the customer. So what I'm trying to get at is you really have to make sure you're, you optimize your listing description as much as much as possible in order to get that sell as well. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, that's another one of the kind of bigger principles I've been thinking about too is, okay, first of all, I really want Amazon to allow us to choose which shirt and color is going to be like the main product list. Yeah, I agree. It's so frustrating when you like pick them and then you have one, you're like, this one looks the best. Like I want this one on there. And then they just put a random design on it. Right. I was, so that's one of my things I want them to change. But well, honestly, I think what happens with that is that um, when they'll probably you don't get to choose which one you want, but and yeah. they'll just like choose for you. But I think this is my theory that when one sells, say someone buys like a women's black, whenever someone types in that keyword for your shirt, they're gonna see women's black because it already sold. Oh, you know? interesting. I, that's I didn't, that's I didn't, my thing. Uh, that that would be cool. I I have heard that once they you like start getting sales, that Amazon will automatically put the most popular one is the hero right. image. So I mean that's good, but yeah. Anyway, unless unless they put like. Uh, let's just say Mother's Day shirt, like unless they put red Mother's Day shirt and you have a red Mother's Day shirt, they'll probably just have that out. Of course, you know, that's obvious. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you, you, I wish you could choose, you know, which color you want to show first as well. That would be nice. Yeah. And I mean, I have another thing I'd like to change about merch as well. Like, I wish there was more functionality to the the uploading process. Because at this point, all you get to do is just upload it and then, you know, submit it. But you, you start, you've you used uh, Printful, right? Mm -hmm. So you know how you can upload a shirt and then you can kind of like move the design around to have it fit however you want in that in that yeah. box. I wish Amazon would put more investment on their designing part so we can at least adjust the, uh, the size. Because sometimes I'll have a design go up on the shirt. I'm like, oh crap, this is probably too big. I have to go back to the design and then in, in a whole different... Uh, a whole different program and then change everything up and then upload it, re-upload it again to, you know, merge my Amazon. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a little frustrating. I mean, yeah, Amazon's totally like you have to play by their rules and they, you know, they, they make these random decisions, which, I mean, I know we were going to talk about this, but like pop sockets, first of all, really exciting that they have those on there. Oh, but yeah. Like why was that the first product? I have no clue. Like to well, me, honestly, I'm excited about it. I, I like it. Yeah. I like the whole idea that they're, you know, they're, they're focused right now, their vision, as you can see, it's not going to be just shirts, sweatshirts, you know, not just clothing. They're going to have accessories to go along with it. And who knows, they might come out with, you know, so other cell phone accessories like, uh, you know, phone cases or they might have, you know, who knows? Like there's the possibilities are endless at this point, you know? Yeah, I think you we you and I mentioned it earlier, but it's just like again, it's this kind of further validation that Amazon is still like invested in merch, and it still thinks that like this is an awesome platform. If they're saying yes, we're willing to expand and go into you know out of the apparel and into kind of like these other things, I think that is like that's the exciting part of the announcement. It's not necessarily the product itself, but it's like knowing okay, they're going to make the investment to go into like pop sockets, which means probably other phone accessories, like you said. But then it's like, you know, you, if you think about like the other, you know, the other print on demand companies like Printful, all the, the other ones that are out there, they all have like the tote bags, beach towels, they like have hats. And hats. Stuff like that. Yeah. So I think like that's the really exciting thing is we're going to be able to like start using the designs we already have, number one, for those those items. But then also like, yeah, I mean, totally like going into all these other different spaces. And then I, I do think hopefully eventually they'll they'll give us a little bit more in the way of functionality, but you know, Amazon, it's, everything's on their time. So it's like when they say, yeah, then it, then we can have it. But, but it was so random though, when you bring up uh, Printful and Printify and all these other uh, fulfillment services, they don't have pop sockets. Not that I know of. Yeah. So why did Amazon go for pop sockets? I was just, you know, I thought the next move would be like hats or something like that to go along with merch, but they chose something like this. And actually the first time I heard about pop sockets was uh, probably like, uh, two months ago, I was at my grandma's house and I have a little cousin. She's like uh, 20 years old. And I saw it on her phone. And I was like, what, what is that? You know, so I, I didn't know about it, but apparently yeah. it's pretty popular among like little kids and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, I didn't really know much about them either. But yeah, I think it's the, the one thing I will say is I did see someone in one of the Facebook groups say it like, why? Why'd they add these like the price point on Amazon for most of them is like, it's super saturated at like nine ninety nine, and for I think the starting price for us to even make a margin is like thirteen dollars wow. or 
twelve dollars or something. So it'll be interesting to see how well those actually do. Have you been uh -huh. enabled for that, by the way, or? No, I have not. Um, I guess they're going out on a rolling basis to certain people. Yeah. Um, so it might take a while to get to me. Uh, I hope I get it pretty soon. But I think, like, I did some research on other uh, websites that sell those. It looks like the price point, the average price point, is like around fifteen dollars. Oh, really? Okay. I see. Yeah. Good stuff. And you know, even think about that. Amazon is also just like a huge, well-known online retailer. They could, you can probably price in the fifteen, sixteen dollar range because most people go to Amazon to buy stuff. Totally. You know, yeah. but I haven't really, I haven't seen any for. You said ten dollars, basically. That's I on Amazon. I didn't even look. I haven't looked, but so that's what someone mentioned in the Facebook groups. I think it's the same thing. We have a lot of competition from kind of these Chinese private label sellers that are coming out. Oh yeah, yeah drives the price down so but we'll see i think again it goes back to like if you create something that resonates with like your target audience it still has the potential to to explode and get you some sales and yeah so we'll see i'm excited yeah same here cool man well um anything else we want to touch on this time i think that's that was pretty much all i had yeah same here uh we pretty much went over our stores you know where we're at and um I can definitely update you uh, next week to see how everything else is going. Uh, hopefully, I get some more designs up this week. And yeah. um, just as you already know, I work a work, work a full time job, so I've been pretty busy. And uh, hopefully, um, I can get more designs up. Really, well, I, honestly, um, I've been thinking that I'm really into this, you know, print on demand business. I might even just wind down out of you know eBay and like not Etsy because it's all print on demand, but eBay. It gets to a point where, especially during the summer, where things really slow down for sales. Mm -hmm. So I'm noticing that I'm putting up a lot of work into it and, you know, just sales are already pretty slow right now. So I don't really see the point of putting so much effort into it. But people like, of course, buying new things as opposed to what I sell is men's clothing. I'm probably just going to, you know, hang up my eBay store for a second and probably just focus w totally on, on merch by Amazon. Yeah, That's man. some things I've been thinking about. Um, I heard summer slowdown is really just a thing, not only in used clothing, but just a thing in general. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, have you heard about that before, summer slowdown? I haven't. Um, I, yeah, I personally haven't, but I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Everyone's out and about doing stuff and saving money maybe for like fourth quarter, which is fine by me. But Oh, yeah. That's, that's another thing I was going to ask. Um, have you heard the uh, thing where people are saying like right now is kind of the best time to start getting up your holiday designs up like Christmas and Halloween? Since we do have that new thing where you can have your your listings up for six months, right? Maybe it's probably not a bad strategy to start listing those things right now. Just get it up early. You know? Yeah, that's a good idea. To be honest, like I haven't really thought about that. I'm really bad right now with planning. Like the I have I've never really like pushed like any of the holidays. Like Father's Day just ha is today actually. So you know I never. I, I don't think about those too much, but that's something I need to start being more serious about because I know there's people that are getting insane numbers doing that. And so, yeah. yeah it's the that's best time of the year to start selling or to be selling on, on Amazon, especially merch. Um, so I might be trying to implement that strategy into what I'm currently doing now. So, you know, I might do like half of my regular niche and then like the other half into getting into, you know, holiday designs. And since we're on tier 500, we have more room to play with, which is, you know, pretty good. Dude, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, again, just talking about fourth quarter gets me really fired up because last year I did 24 sales in December and I only had like 15 designs alive or something like that. And now I have, you know, 185 designs alive. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be crazy. So yeah, I'm excited. Yep. Yeah, me too. Same here, man. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, we'll have to link up next weekend, see where we're at numbers wise. But um, yeah, for everyone I'm watching on my channel, I'm going to put a link to Chris's channel in the description and obviously a link to the Facebook group and everything else. And uh, Chris, anything on your end? You want to uh, no, just, if you want to check out my channel, I know you're going to link it in the description, but I'll just say it, uh, New Venture Entrepreneurs uh, at YouTube. And I also have an Instagram as well, if you'd like to follow me on there. Awesome. And that's going to be it for me. Cool. Good stuff. All right, man, we will uh, touch base next weekend and excited to hear about kind of your progress over the week. All right. Thanks for having me on, Ben. Yeah. Talk soon.